Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat, if you're new here. On my channel I do a bunch of different types of DIYs and art videos. I apologize if I sound a little weird today. I am a little bit sick, my throat hurts, and it's just one of those days. I've actually been working on editing a dollar store video that I was supposed to be uploading a while ago, but I've had some issues with the save files and Long story short, it is not done yet, so I'm going to try to move on to another video. Hopefully this one will go better. So I've probably never told you guys, but my favorite medium to work with is clay. So today I kind of want to show you guys a little bit of what I do with clay. I'm just going to show you what I'm doing and I'll tell you some of the little tips that I keep in mind when I'm creating something with clay. My first trick for you that I use constantly is to use just a piece of jewelry wire and tie either end to a clothespin. That way you can hold on to the ends and you can pull the wire through the clay and it's a much easier way to cut the clay than using any sort of cutting tool. You can also buy a wire cutting tool but it's cheaper and if one breaks, this is a better alternative and you can make your own if you have a broken one. So I am making a cat and the first thing to do is to create the shape of the animal's head. Cats have an elongated, forward-facing, oval type of a shape to their head. So it does stick out quite a bit from the neck. If you don't capture that, then the cat's face will look really flat. I'm adding on the neck to the sculpture to create more stability for when I mount the piece. I will mount it on a board, so this way there's more surface area for me to attach. Also, it makes it look a little bit more realistic as the head blends into the neck instead of cutting off. It's important to work out where you want the features to go, like the ears, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, before you start doing details, especially when working with clay. And always remember when attaching another piece of clay to your main piece of clay, you should always score and slip it. Scoring is just taking a sharp object and creating a hatch mark going one way and the other and then applying a very wet clay to that to help fuse both clays together. When creating a feature like an eye, it is really helpful to create the eyeball before you actually put on the eyelid, because then you can build it up and really make it look like there is a round object in the eye socket. Once you get the eyeball done, you can cut out the details in the eyeball and then you place the eyelid over top of that. But always make sure to fill in all the cracks because if you fire a piece of clay with any cracks or holes where air is sitting, it will explode in the kiln. And obviously making a cat without eyelids will be creepy, but once you get it all done, it will look more natural than it would if you were to just make the eye. What I like about clay is that you can add or subtract any amount of clay. If you mess up on one spot, you can always cover it up with the clay or you can remove clay that's extra very easily without damaging your artwork. I do find myself frequently during the process of making something um, changing my direction a little bit or you know finding myself making a mistake and I can change it so easily. I find myself changing at least three aspects of every clay piece that I have done. Here I'm just cutting the ears off because I think the top of the head just is a little too short. So it is okay to second guess yourself and try to fix a mistake later on into your project. 
especially with clay because you can just cut off a piece, save that, and score and slip that right back on so you don't really lose any of your progress. I'm just glad I've decided to do this here instead of once I've gotten the textures done. And I won't be showing you all of the time that I spent working on the texture because it did take me quite some time. So for the sake of the video not being too long, I will cut out parts of that. Now when you're putting a fur texture on a sculpture, you just want to take a really thin, sharp object. So here I am using a poking tool, or something you can use to score or slip, and I'm just dragging it through the clay, flicking it upwards in the direction that the hair would grow normally on a regular animal. And I do actually use a reference for this part because certain animals have hair that moves in a certain way, like around their eyes, or on their nose, or on their lip. And especially with cats, their ears are all filled with all that long hair. So to capture that, it is really important to use a photograph reference. It doesn't have to be the exact subject that you are creating, but it helps to just see it in front of you. I also somehow skipped over the fact that I hollowed out the head. This makes it easier to fire so that there's no warping or cracking because the inside would take a lot longer to fire than the thinner parts. And it also helps so that you have a good place to grip the head because you can put your hand inside of it and kind of grab it, your fingers curved so it just sits on, in your hand. So if you're making something like this, always make sure to carve out any really thick places.
So I did finish the head. Here's the finished product. I let it dry a little bit. Try to get close so you can see the texture. And I even put a few of the larger holes where I will put whiskers later. I'm thinking of actually gluing in long hairs for that. And I will be painting this in another video. I won't be using glaze just because I don't have a kiln available to me. I just don't want to have to run back and forth in order to use a kiln multiple times. So this is the finished product. Let me know what you think down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!